Welcome back to another video. Now we have all heard of RAM drives. The way you can create virtual disk drives out of your RAM to get crazy speeds of up to 10 gigabytes per second. And a lot of people actually use these RAM drives to use hard drive uh, to run hard drive intensive programs like ANSYS, which required a, a lot of IOPS. And the fact is that they work really well but not all of us have terabytes or at least a hundred gigabytes of ram so that we can allocate extra memory to our virtual disk drives but what most of us do have are gpus and gpus have some very solid graphics memory going up to 80 to 100 gigabytes per second now there is a catch to see what we were actually dealing with, I went ahead and run some CUDA based benchmarks and that gave us a few numbers. Now when it comes to the data transfer being from within the GPU, my current graphics card which is the GTX 960 has a bandwidth of 80 GB per second. That's a lot. But when it actually comes to communicating with my rest of the system it has a maximum bandwidth of 6.5 gb per second now it is still a lot but not as lot as a ram drive can actually give so a ram drive can be anywhere around 10 gigabytes per second so let's see how my gtx 960 compares to an actual ram drive if i try to create a ram drive out of my graphics memory so for this purpose we will be using two different softwares the first one would be vram fs by alexander and this guy he created uh, this software for use on linux he used the fuse library and opencl now you need to know how to compile simple uh, c software on linux and use the make command to uh, actually get this running and uh, the developer does explain uh, how everything works uh, in detail i link i'll of course link the repository down in the description the matter of the fact was i was able to make a ram drive out of my gpu on linux using this particular program and now on to benchmarks i got only 1.2 gb per second write and 1.5 gb per second read speeds from this program so let's take a look at sahimi's implementation of the same for windows he uses a few other things like lm disk drive and uh, you know other windowy stuffs to actually get this running on uh, your windows machine and for that he does provide a pre-compiled version of the program so it's just a simple exe um, program and you can uh, simply allocate memory so if you want to go ahead and write right now on to the benchmarks 1.1 or close to 1.2 gigabytes per second sequential read and 1.5 gigabytes per second sequential write and that was it so it's nowhere near the actual performance benefit of a ram drive which can get you almost 10 times the performance and actually it is pretty slow even from ssd standards the latest apple macbook has a ssd pci based ssd nonetheless that has three gigabytes per second read and write so this is bad from even uh, an SSD standpoint although it is very fast from rest of the SSDs but slow nonetheless. So what is causing this whole thing to slow down? Now we need to understand the way GPU VRAM works is it's meant to communicate directly with the graphics processing unit. The, in a similar way that a normal RAM is supposed to directly communicate with the CPU and nothing else. So the way we are transferring data to the GPU and also keep in mind that the GPU understands pixel data and not your regular data data. So it's a bit different, it's not a CPU. So the way your normal data is getting stored on that VRAM is it is being processed by a OpenCL bagged or a CUDA bagged driver 
which then enables that data to be converted into a form of pixel data that can be understandable by the GPU itself and then that GPU stores the data onto the graphical VRAM. So that's where everything gets bottlenecked. The data has to be converted and goes through a couple of other processing steps to actually be stored on your VRAM. So that was it for today's video, short little video on what how the GPU RAM drives perform and thank you so much a huge shout out to both of the developers for uh, developing these programs and go ahead and uh, you know hit them up on github and I will talk to you in the next one.